Hey guys, this is Bryant, and I am doing the micro lecture on chapter 4, uh, Generations of Praise by Shields and Butsu. Um, the context we're talking about is the years 312 to 600. Um, this is where Constantine uh, made Christianity like the legal recognized religion of the empire. Um, right now the churches are associated with geographic regions. Um, like the Western churches um, and the churches of the East. Um, Western churches later became known as the Roman Catholic churches, and um, the churches in the East became known as the Eastern or Orthodox churches. Um, the sources from where the book gets the information is um, church orders um, like Apostolic Constitutions and Testamentum Domini. Um, Eucologian lectionaries, and a travel diary from a nun named Egeria. Um, there's also some other sources that it mentions, but they're not as nearly important as um, because they just worship, they uh, mention worship indirectly. Um, some of the places that they met were um, like before this time period, they met wherever they could find, um, such as a person's home, um, like we saw in this book, going to church in the first century. Um, they, they would meet in people's homes. Um, now they are um, able to meet in basilicas. Um, interesting that baptistries were not made into the basilica. Um, they preferred using living water, so they used rivers instead of uh, a pool inside the church. Um, there was also not modern seating, so um, people would only stand or kneel. And it doesn't really mention anything about um, special seating for the elderly or anything. Um, the times they met, um, um, it, it was able to change the meeting time since Constantine made Christianity the religion. They were able to um, uh, meet out in the open now. They, wouldn't, they didn't have to hide in secret and meet in the night or other times. They, would, they was able to do it during normal times. Um, the Western churches, um, which was the Roman Catholic churches, or turned into Roman Catholic, uh, would meet every day um, for the Eucharist, and then the East, which is the Eastern Orth which turned into the Eastern Orthodox, would meet on the Eucharist on Sundays and major feast days such as Christmas or Easter. Um, and then you can see how that kind of carried into Mass um, for the Roman Catholic Church, uh, how they met every day for the Eucharist. Um, and it said the the book said that the whole year revolved around Easter. So each Sunday was a reiteration of the Easter feast and and how important Easter was. Um, the ministry of the church, the local bishops, and uh, they had doctoral, doctrinal orthodoxy, and, and that reached a high level of intensity. Um, Constantine brought the state into the order, and so which established an um, Episcopal structure, and that... I guess gave it more structure and easier to manage. Um, the bishop was chosen by all people. He must be unanimously accepted. Um, he is the guarantor of orthodox doctrine, not the solitary preacher. Um, the presbyters and, or priests were the, um, the preachers, and they were assigned to teaching and preaching. And since there were multiple, one, multiple of them, they shared the preaching and teaching role and that meant multiple sermons on Sundays and I don't know if that was a great idea. Um, the Eucharist was also a very important part of their service. Um, the two things that were central to their service was the Word and the Eucharist. These went together hand in hand. Um, at the end of the service and the at the conclusion the congregation responded with Amen which validated their liturgical function as a legitimate order within the church. So it was not taken lightly. Um, it, it was participating with the clergy and the divine mysteries. Um, anyway, that's the chapter that I have, that's what I've learned from this chapter. Um, thanks for listening.